Okay, if everybody would mute your mics, please. We are, are now recording Zoom class for Acts chapter 5, starting at verse 11. Today is January the 26th, 2023. And this is my lovely wife of 45 years, Barbara. And my name is Jerry. Jerry and Barbara Seymour and Seymour in the Word. Yes. We do see more in the word. That's a good one. It is. All right. Well, uh, join with us as we welcome Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you that you sent your son, that he might be the living word to us. He came, lived a sinless life. He died on a cruel cross for our sins. He rose from the grave. He ascended after 40 days and now sits at your right hand. And we thank you that after he ascended, he sent the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We receive you. We desperately recognize our dependence upon you. And we thank you tonight for joining with us. You said where two or three are gathered together, you would be in the midst. And as we open your wonderful word of God to us. Let it be revelation like we've never seen before. Let these scriptures in Acts chapter 5 explode on us. Thank you. In Jesus' name, let the words of our mouth go deep and be seed that brings forth an abundant harvest. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So we left out last week uh, talking about Ananias and Sapphira. We compared them to Nadab and Abihu in the Old Testament. And uh, the last verse that we talked about was verse 11, Acts chapter 5, verse 11. So great fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard these things. This word, uh, so great fear came upon the phrase there in the Greek is the the cause of great fear. That is the Greek word uh, number 5,401 in the Strong's Concordance. So I, after looking at this verse, great fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard it it doesn't just say great fear it says the cause of great fear what was the cause because there there was a a, a set of conditions that produced a cause mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so the word of testimony went out among all the church and upon all those that heard the word of testimony in Greek, the te word of testimony mm -hmm. is God do it again. God do it again. That's that's the our translation of the Greek word. Testimony in the Greek means God do it again. So the power of testimony was the cause of great fear. The reputation. What was their testimony? The testimony. I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> but I'm going to get to that in just a second. Okay. The reputation. The reputation of the power of God working through the, the hands of the apostles was the cause of great fear. Mm -hmm. It's kind of intimidating sometimes when you see God's hand working. And it. It does rattle you. It it can. It has the capability. Well, that's what it says here. Yeah. The cause of great fear went and was upon all the church and upon all who heard these things. So as the testimony of these things went out, the cause of great fear, and the word actually is not fear, it is terror. The response of the panic, either flight to save your life came upon without their choosing all those 
who heard the testimony. They didn't have an option. They, the testimony was so strong and so powerful and so miraculous that it caused great fear. Now, this is in response to Ananias and Sapphira. And just the history, yeah. that is the, res the immediate response right. of the situation and the results of what happened to Ananias and Sapphira that we talked about last week. So great I, fear. And, and I would have to say, yeah, I'd be right there with them. No. <laughs> Your friend drops dead at the altar of the church. Yeah, I'd, yeah you don't, I'd, I'd be right there with them. Great fear would probably consume so me as well. I wanted to find another time that this type of expression was used. And it's in 1 Samuel 17. King Saul and all of Israel heard the words of the Philistine, the uncircumcised giant who threatened them every day. And their desire to live was removed and it was replaced with terror. Mm. Okay, so this intimidation, intim the testimony, mm -hmm. the the continual bombardment. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is like having gasoline and oxygen. Now, you can have gasoline and oxygen together. Obviously, we put gasoline in the tanks of our car and it's introduced to, to oxygen, but it doesn't explode. It takes a spark. Something has to start the explosion. And that's what happened here. The testimony of the great things of the Lord that was going on by the hands of the apostles caused an explosion of fear and terror. And the testimony, God do it again, testimony was the igniting the conditions of panic and terror. The reputation, God moving through these the apostles, the conditions were ripe for an explosion. I, won't, I, I know I'm kind of harping on this, but all the church and all who heard the testimony of these things were ripe for an explosion. Some, okay, the, the explosion, there's, there's other evidence of this explosion. We're going to talk about it in a minute. Okay, verse 12, and through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. <clears throat> Doesn't that sound familiar? Yeah, so you remember the lesson that we did at the beginning of Acts, and I included a picture of the outside of the temple. Well, that courtyard outside the, the temple perimeter is called Solomon's porch. So this is where all these healings, this is where Peter and John would preach in the Gentile court, in the Gentile part of the temple. So if you walked in the Eastern gate, this Solomon's porch would be to your left along the Southern wall. It was an elevated porch, like Barbara said, but it gave, a podium for all the people that were down below also. So this Solomon's porch could accommodate, and we'll see, accommodate a very large crowd. Well, it had 5,000 on it one day. Right. But do you see what the apostles are doing? And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. This is where... <laughs> They keep going to the temple. They're back at the temple. They're at Solomon's porch. They are not moved at all by the threats. They are not moved at all. And they are in one place, in one mind, in one accord. Verse 13. That sounds like the day of Pentecost, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Yet. None of the rest dared join them, but the people esteemed them highly. Now, I, I had a problem with this verse. <laughs> Barbara and I had a problem with this verse. Yeah. The problem is them. Is who, not clearly defined. Who is them? Which them are they they're talking about? This them or that them? 
<laughs> or, all, or all of them. <laughs> so, you know what I did? I went to the Greek to see what the Greek said. And the Greek wasn't very clear either. And I went to other translations and other translations weren't very clear. So is this them? They all use the word them. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so is this them, the, the body of believers, the church, the growing church, or is this them, the apostles? Let's, let's look at it again. Yet none of the rest of them, oh, I, I take that to be the church or, or the general public, maybe, them, dared join, but the people esteemed them highly. So I, I, I seem to take that the, the first them is the general public and the second them is the the people esteem them highly was the apostles and the church i took it the other way around okay so explain. But neither one of us really know for sure so this is just an opinion a matter of opinion because in all of our digging and all of our research it's truly truly not clear and you can read into it if you look at my notes you know i give the definition of radical adjective and a noun and this is radical behavior right peter and john are being really radical here and radical is of or going to the root or origin a radical difference uh thorough going or extreme, extreme especially as regards to a change from accepted or traditional form so they were radical about going through this change mm -hmm. of bringing mm -hmm. jesus christ and not the law right okay right social favoring drastic political economic or social you, we can add in their religious reform right right so Peter and John were being very radical. And if you look at my definition, my personal definition of the word radical is a person who operates in a great conviction and dedication towards something, and I should have put in there, towards something greater than I do. Mm -hmm. A person that challenges me to go outside of my comfort zone. Anybody that you look at and you go boy they they just they exercise to the extreme that's a radical that's radical or i can't believe those people that go out and street witness i'm not comfortable doing that we refer to them as radical christians right or those crazy folks that went and distributed Bibles in communist China. That's really radical. <laughs> How could somebody do that and think that they were safe doing that? Who said we were safe doing that? <laughs> or doing crisis pregnancy counseling when, you know, you, you're afraid to talk to somebody about life in general or, or Jesus, but yet someone can sit down and talk to someone about their unplanned pregnancy to try and convince them not to have an abortion. I've been in many of those situations. And when I started crisis pregnancy counseling, it took me two years to say yes from the time that the person asked me to do it. And they asked me multiple times because I'm going, I can't do that. That is just, that's radical. That's outside my comfort zone. But yet, what? But yet I did it. I was able to put the fear aside. I crossed the chicken line. Hello. And the action of the people became highly seen. You know, it's not the people. We're not intimidated by the people. A lot of the, a lot of the people we consider radical are our friends. Mm -hmm. It's the action that they're doing that makes them radical people. Okay. I'm so so the apostles had terrifying, unique, miraculous power and incredible authority. That, that would be radical. That would be radical. Okay. 
So that was that was them. And the people dare not join them. And the people esteemed them highly. So I could see believers and non-believers alike would dare to join them. Mm -hmm. Believers that were timid, that did not have the three years of walking with Jesus like Peter did and John did. Right, right. Being afraid for their life after seeing their friends drop dead. And even in Acts 4, let's go back one whole chapter. Acts 4, 3. I mean, news travels fast. Let me just tell you, in a community, news travels fast. Okay. Acts 4, 3. Acts 4, 3. And they laid their hands on them and put them in custody until the next day, where it was already evening. So Peter and John had already been arrested once. Mm -hmm. So that news had traveled. And for what? For preaching. Right, right. Preaching okay. Jesus. Acts 4, 18 through 21. Here's another time. So they called them and commanded them to stop speaking at all, to not speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said to them, whether it's right in your sight or in God's, we're going to listen to God. So when they further threatened them, that's pretty intimidating. That didn't slow these guys up. They let them go because they didn't want to further punish them. But what did they do? They were out there the next day preaching the gospel. And then in 510, 5, 5 and 510 is two other examples. And uh, these were life-threatening situations. This isn't just a slap on the wrist. These were life-threatening situations. So I could see where it would be very radical and very intimidated to other believers and other non-believers alike. But look at verse 14. Yes. And believers were increasingly added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women. Now, previously, Luke was very careful to say approximately, he gave us a number. He said approximately 3,000 were added, and then a second time, 5,000 were added. But here he does get, he just says multitudes of men and women. Why? Why did he do that? I, I tell me. Because he couldn't count them all. They were, they were coming in in herds and crowds and, and great numbers. They couldn't count. He just knew that there were men and women, and it was a great multitude that could not be numbered, that they could not keep track of. They are witnessing an explosion. Mm -hmm. An explosion was occurring in front of them. The conditions were right. The people were tired of the religious rule there was now a way that they could come and and they the witness of the miracles proved the word. That's right. The witness of the miracles proved that this is the way. This is the way. This is the way. The the power of the old covenant was superseded by the new covenant of Jesus blood and it was evident with signs and wonders so that the unbelievers began to believe and there was an explosion verse 15 so they brought the sick out to the streets and laid them on beds and couches or at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them this took me How back. powerful. Man, you talk about supernatural explosion of power. Where did I write that? Terrible, terrifying, but unique, miraculous power and incredible authority was flowing through the apostle. You see, Jesus promised 
that we would do greater things. Jesus said that these signs shall follow them that believe. Mm -hmm. But we can't do greater things until we do the things that Jesus did. We can, we, that's the first step. We have to do those things first. And here we see first evidence of greater things than Jesus. I don't find any place in the synoptic gospels where the shadow of Jesus passed by and healed. The closest thing was the woman with the issue of blood reached out, the woman who had uh, had been hemorrhaging for 12 years, reached out and touched Jesus's garment. And he says, who touched me? Mm -hmm. Who touched me? Yeah. He did not, it was. He didn't lay hands on him. He didn't speak he didn't spit he didn't do any of that it was just just his presence in her faith right but his here presence in her faith we see a greater miracle simply the passing by and the sun causing a sh his shadow to fall on people so verse 15 uh verse 16 also a multitude, there it is again. How many? A multitude. multitude. He couldn't count them all. Luke could not count them all. Gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing the sick people and those who were tormented by evil spirits. And they were all healed. Mm. Do you see? Let's go back to verse 11. So great fear came upon all the church and upon all the people who heard these things. The conditions were right for explode. We have gasoline and oxygen, <laughs> and all we need is a little bit of faith stirring this up, and there is an explosion occurring in the early church. You have anything else to say? Mm -mm. Okay. So, verse 17, then the high priest rose up, and all those who were with them, including the sect of the Sadducees, and they were all filled with indignation. They weren't intimidated nor full of fear. No, they, they were, were full jealous. of anger. They were anger, jealousy, mm -hmm. pure jealousy. Why? Because the excitement, the the people. You see, Sanhedrin and the the rulers, the high priests, the council, love the prey, love the praise of the people. And now the praise of the people was shifting away from them to the apostles. You see, so many times we see that the high priest, the Sanhedrin, the council, was swayed by the power, the opinion of the people. We see it over and over again. They didn't do this because they were afraid of the people. They didn't want to 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 cause a riot you know, or, or this, that, and the other. They were very concerned about the popularity, the praise, the, the power and prestige that they were given by the people. And they were all filled with indignation. Verse 17, pure unadulterated jealousy. They mm -hmm. laid hands on the apostles and put them into the common prison. Now, so <clears throat> I see verse 18. This is the second time that uh, Peter and John, it doesn't exactly say who the apostles are. We have to assume that in the narrative, it hasn't changed from the apostles. So mm -hmm. we, we are assuming that the apostles here are Peter and John. And the commentaries that I read agreed with that, even though Luke does not call them by name. And they laid, and the Sanhedrin and the council laid their hands on the apostles and put them in a common, in the common prison. Hallelujah. 19. <laughs> but, Hallelujah. <laughs> but God. Yes. <clears throat> One of my favorite phrases in the in the Bible. But God. Yes. But God. <clears throat> but at night 
an angel of the Lord, opened the prison doors and brought them out, saying, Go, stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. Yes. What is this life? What? What? The life with Jesus. This way of life. This way of life. Yes. This way of life. The angel gave them their sermon title that day. The angel said, go right back to the temple. Of course, they were in the temple when they got out of prison because the prison was under the the temple. And so it, w- it wasn't a very far walk. Uh, go back, go back into the temple and preach and speak to the people all the word. This continue to describe this way of life. Salvation is by no other than in Jesus Christ. There is only one way of salvation, and that was the gospel that they were bringing. So guess what they did? (laughs) They listened to the angel. That's right. They didn't go home. They didn't go change their clothes. They didn't go get something to eat. They went straight to the temple. And when they heard this, they entered the temple early Early. in the morning. And talked. The high priest and those and the elders of the council came together in verse 21 with all the elders of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought out. They didn't have the news yet. News travels fast, but it wasn't traveling that fast. (laughs) Um, So, but when the officers, verse 22, when the officers came and did not find them in prison, they returned and reported saying, indeed, we found the prison shut securely and the guards standing outside before the doors. But when we opened the doors, we found no one inside. I want you to look at the detail. I want you to look at the detail that Luke goes into right here. They, They did not find them in the prison. They returned and reported. They found the guards outside. They found the prison securely locked. Mm-hmm. There were there was the, the prison doors were shut. They were secure. They were locked. Nobody jimmied the locks. The guards standing. They didn't go to sleep. They were standing at their post. You see, they they had bribed the Roman soldiers to to say that they had fallen asleep and the disciples had come and robbed Jesus's grave and taken his body away. But here it says the the guards were found standing outside the door. But when they opened the door, they found no one inside. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 24. <laughs> What? Shocker. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> when the high priest, the captain of the temple, the chief priest heard these things, they wondered what the end, the what outcome. the outcome would be. How's this going to work out? Yeah. How's this going to We did our best to secure them. They're not here. They didn't dig their way out. <clears throat> they didn't bribe their way out. How did these guys, how in the, how's this going to work out, fellas? <clears throat> so as they were talking, one came, then the captain went with the officers. Let's see, let's see. Uh, 25. Then, Then one came and told them, saying, look, the men that you put in prison are standing in the temple teaching the people. (laughs) 
wonder how this is going to work out. You know, they they did their they <clears throat> they put them in a stone room in solitary confinement and put guards outside and the guards never went to sleep but yet they had escaped second time in just a few weeks in scripture that um guards fell asleep or the angel of the lord uh did something to the guards to allow the ones inside to let out they did that to jesus too right <laughs> same thing that happened to jesus i want you to look it says in verse 26 then the captain then the captain okay so this fella is mentioned uh previously in what a witness this guy the captain are you talking about? see verse 26 then the captain went with the officers and brought them without violence for they feared the people lest they should be stoned who is this guy the captain of the temple guard was second in command only to the high priest according to leviticus we see okay look over flip back over to uh acts chapter 4 verse 1 now as they spoke to the people the priest and the captain of the temple and the sanhedrin came upon him this fellow this position was described in leviticus and he was appointed by the high priest and in the in the jewish nation this office was second in command and power and authority to the high priest. He was always around the council. He was over the council. He was over the Sanhedrin, and he was witnessing these things that were happening in and around. What a unequivocal, unadulterated witness to the things that were happening. This unbiased I, I i don't know all i can tell you is what i saw for 40 years they brought this lame man and put him at the gate mm -hmm. and the next thing i know he's running jumping up and down but he's hanging on to these two guys by the name of peter and john mm -hmm. we put them in prison we put guards in front of i I put my very best guards and somehow during the night they escaped, but they didn't go anywhere. They went right back to the temple. We, you know, it, it's amazing how little details we get. I would have loved, I, I would have <laughs> loved to interview this guy. I would have loved to interview the captain of the temple. So they're asking each other, I wonder how this is going to come out. I wonder how this is going to work out. But they did, they dared not harm Peter and John because they were, look at it, they were concerned about the people and they thought the people would stone them. There must have been piles of stones sitting around the temple all the time because they, they were, they, you know, they brought, uh the woman to jesus who was caught in the act of adultery and and so they, they must have had stones right there ready to, to implement the judgment because they were they feared the people lest the people be ready to stone them and verse 27 and when they had brought them out they sat peter and john before the council and the high priest asked them, did we not strictly command you not to teach in this name? And look, you, hallelujah, have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. Yes. And intend to bring this man's blood on us. They had filled the city. When, what is going to take place that the city 
of Atlanta, the city of Cumming, the city of Roswell, Alfreda, and the neighboring cities are filled with your doctrine. And we are so tired of you pointing your bony finger up in our nose, accusing us of killing this man. You know good and well the Romans did it. We didn't do it. I can just hear them. We told you not to talk about this anymore. Verse 29, but Peter and the other apostles answered them and said, we ought to obey God rather than man. Just a very succinct response, just like he, they had done before. Well, let, let's go back to verse um, 28. Did we not strictly command you not to teach in this, in this name? And look, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood on us. These was this was the high priest, the Sanhedrin, the uh, the council that was saying that. And let's flip back over to Matthew chapter twenty seven. Oh, come on and preach, Barbara. Matthew twenty seven is when Jesus was handed over to Pontius Pilate. Judas goes out and hangs himself. Jesus faces Pilate again in verse 11. Verse 15, they bring out Barnabas. Barabbas. Uh, Barabbas. I'm sorry. I get those names. They bring out Barabbas and they, and they said, the governor says, okay, it's the custom to release a prisoner to you at Passover. Here's Jesus. And here's Barabbas. Which do you want? Give us Barabbas. Well, what should I do with this man, Jesus? Crucify him. Crucify him. Verse see, 25. See that in verse tw uh, 22, 23? Well, what should we done be done with this man? Crucify him. And verse 25. And all the people answered and said his blood be upon us and on our children wait 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 look at verse 26 and, and he had released scourged jesus that's an important word scourged jesus okay good. when he had scourged so here in acts the same people, my, my, my. the high priest is saying, you're filling Jerusalem with your doctrine and you intend to bring this man's blood on us. But what did they declare in Matthew probably a month or so past? Well, uh, actually, uh, longer four, than that. Yeah, a little longer than that. 40, 60 days, we'll say. Yeah. 60 to 75 days passed, they declared, let this man's blood be upon us. And now they're trying to get out of it and say, how dare you put this man's blood on us? I'd say the prophecy was being fulfilled. Mm -mm -mm. Just a little side note. There. That's good. That's good. I like that. Do we accept the blood of Jesus? Can we recognize that yes his blood is upon us because he freely poured out his blood he did not they did not take his life from him but he willingly poured out his life on us so yes may jesus blood be upon us and we recognize the power and authority of the blood of jesus verse 29 but Peter and the other apostles answered, we ought to obey God rather than man. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you murdered by hanging on a tree. And one day we'll share the teaching that we got recently in Israel that <clears throat> Jesus was hung on a tree 
rather than our conventional two beams that we see in the traditional cross. <coughs> Whom you murdered by hanging on the tree. Bless you. Excuse me. So I just want to, to, okay. And we are all witnesses to these things. And so also is the Holy Spirit the witness whom God has given to those who obey him. God has given the Holy Spirit to all those who obey him. Then in one council, then one in the council stood up, the Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law held in high respect by all the people and commanded them to put the apostles outside. Now, this is the first time we see Gamaliel mentioned, but later on, we see that in Acts 22, that uh, Gamaliel comes in again, his reputation as being the teacher of uh, Paul, uh, Saul. Saul, who became Paul. He, but he was teacher of Saul. Right. Apostle Paul said, I sat under the teachings of Gamaliel, and Gamaliel was very highly respected among the people. And listen at the council, the wisdom mm -hmm. that flowed out of this man. You see, there's others. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm trying to get to the end of this. Uh, there's. Well, I, the, I think the whole thing's good, Jerry. Okay. Go. Can I read it? Yeah. Verse 35. And he said to them, men of Israel, take heed to yourself what you intend to do regarding these men. For some time ago, Theodos rose up claiming to be somebody. A number of men, about 400, joined him. He was slain, and all who obeyed him were scattered and came to nothing. It came to nothing. After this man, Judas of Galilee, rose up in the days of the census and drew away many men from him. He also perished, and all who obeyed him were dispersed. And now I say to you, keep away from these men and let them alone. Wow, what wisdom. For if this plan... Or this work is of men, it will come to nothing. But, but if it is of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest you even be found to fight against God. And they all agreed with him. And when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded them that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Dude, you know, it would have been so much better on them if they would have listened to the counsel of one of their own. They did. But they, they but they continued to harass the yes, apostles. All throughout the book of Acts. Yes. They continued to harass. Yes. Them. But aren't you glad this thing didn't die with Jesus? Hallelujah. Right. It's still going on. That's right. The work of the apostles. What did Gamaliel say? For if this plan or work is of men, it will come to nothing. But if it is of God, we cannot overthrow it. Lest, lest even you even be found to fight against God. So many people have come against the Jews, come against Christianity come against God and nothing has stopped it. Nothing has slowed it down. Thanks be unto God for those who persevere like Peter and John did and continue to go out and teach and preach and spread the gospel of the good news. It's not gonna go away. I don't care what people think about America or the world at large, it ain't going away. We are in it for the long haul. That's right. And so is God. Amen. Can we delete, can we delete or delay God's will? No. You can only delete, delay, postpone God's will in your life. You can't delete God's will in my life. I, by disobedience, by willing, being unwilling 
to submit to his plan. I can delay his plan for my life. I'm not sure you can delete it from your life, though. I'm not. Well, I don't know. It would be tough, but I believe it's possible. But God has a plan for each of us. Let's not fight against his plan. Yeah. Let's submit to his plan. Let's not be found fighting against God. What a foolish place to be. Mm -hmm. I refuse to delete or delay or postpone your perfect will for my life. I submit my life to you and I come in line. I surrender my life come before you as a sweet smell and savor burnt on the embers of the altar. This did not stop the apostles. Look, it says, and when they had beaten them, the word there is scourge. If you look at my notes, it's uh, on verse 40, the Greek word 11, 49 in Greek means to skin the process of thrashing to scourge with 39 lashes. The example is the, the uh, of 39 is not to exceed 40. So they stopped at 39. That is called a Jewish fence. And you'll see in Deuteronomy 25, three, that you do not exceed 40. So they stopped at 39. So if they lost count, they were one short. The victim was shamefully stripped to his waist in public and then beaten with a whip that had three lashes on the end. This continued for a maximum of 39 lashes. And the results of this was the complete stripping away of the skin off the back and permanently scarring the entire upper torso. They whipped the back twice, and then they would whip the, the, the chest once. And they repeated this 13 times, this cycle, two on the back, one on the chest, or a total of 39. What amazes me is Jesus predicted this. Jesus predicted in Matthew 5, 10 through 12, that the words of Jesus must have, have rung in their spirit because the Holy Spirit was bringing all things to their remembrance. Jesus said, blessed are you when men say wait, 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 wait. Blessed are those who are persecuted mm -hmm. for righteousness sake. For yours is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed. Now turn to Mark. Are you when they rot, revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake? Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Can't you just imagine Peter and John just having those words of Jesus from the Sermon on the Mount just ringing in their ears while they're sitting? I mean, they had to have because they left out of the prison rejoicing. Turn to uh, Mark and, 13, 9. And glad that they were able to endure it flip over to mark 13 9 we're going to read 9 through 13 for the sake of time mark 13 verse 9 yes but watch out for yourselves for they will deliver you up to councils they will beat you in the synagogues you will be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony to them. And the gospel must first be preached to all the nations. Keep going. But when they arrest you and deliver you up, do not worry beforehand or premeditate what you will speak. But whatever is given to you in that hour, speak that. For it is not you who speaks, but the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Now, brother will betray brother to death and father and a father his child and that's it yeah 
Oh, okay. So after they had beaten them, they let them go. And so verse 41, so they departed from the presence of the council rejoicing. Why were they rejoicing? Are y'all reading that in verse 41? That they were counted worthy to suffer shame, to be beaten publicly for his namesake. Did that slow them down? Did that stop them? No. Verse 42, and daily in the temple and in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus Christ, Jesus the Christ. Right. Is this radical? Yes. Is this radical? Yes. <clears throat> this that we're reading in scripture, not this our life. So <laughs> after they were beaten, they didn't go underground. You know, they didn't wear masks to conceal their faces. Right. They didn't uh, limit their uh, public exposure. No, they went right back in. Look at verse, look, verse 42. And daily <laughs> in the headquarters of the Sanhedrin, mm -hmm. of the council, of the high priest, witnessed by the captain of the temple guard, <clears throat> they were relentless, radical. <clears throat> Dear Father, I thank you for the Holy Spirit baptism boldness yes Lord. i thank you for the opportunity to exercise this current level of boldness knowing that you have more for me to walk in i recognize that i must exercise what i've got in order that i might receive more and i accept my responsibility father to faithfully respond to daily opportunities when you set me up to share my testimony of your life changing power in me. What you've done for just what you've done for me, God. Yes, God. I accept responsibility. I will respond to opportunities. I recognize that you have placed eternity in me. And I have the chance to change someone else's eternity. Thank you, Father. Help me to be radical. Help me to be radical. Yes, Lord. Help me be radical. Just a little crazier than the one next to you. Yes. Just a little more on fire than the one next to me. Mm. Father, I accept this challenge. I accept responsibility. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you've enjoyed this, please share the uh, the link with your friends. And we'll be back next week on Thursday night at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time to talk about chapter 6 of Acts and see. Probably one of my favorite people. Oh, my gracious. Acts chapter 6. The Holy Spirit, the acts of the Holy Spirit working in the early church. We thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Okay.